Good morning, Tim Scholars. I'm glad that you're all comfortable at home while I'm here, um, but we still have stuff that we have to do. Uh, we're going to continue with our idea of aqueous reactions. You may remember we talked about that idea yesterday. Aqueous reactions means that there's reactions that are taking place in water, and it generally means that we're dealing with solutions. One of the main types of those is called a precipitation reaction. You've heard of precipitation when you associate with rain and snow and things like that. In many ways, it's the same idea. The difference has to be in terms of how we're mixing things or whatever else, whereas when we talk about rain or snow, it has to do with the solution being air and the precipitate being water. We're going to deal with different precipitates. Okay. You should know that a precipitation reaction is a double replacement reaction. So obviously we're bringing in what we did in the previous unit before the exam with reactions. We're going to be writing and balancing equations, okay? Uh, but we're going to kind of bring in the solution part to it as well and broaden the definition, okay? So <clears throat> there, what we're going to do for, is in two steps. First, we're going to talk about something called the complete molecular equation. The equations that we've looked at so far have always been complete molecular, okay? So it's really just writing out the equation as far as anything we've done so far, okay? Then we're gonna add another layer to that and talk about making it a net ionic equation. Let's get through the first part first though, okay? So when we talk about a complete molecular equation, okay, we're gonna be talking about mixing a couple solutions together, okay? So the first thing I always suggest is that you identify your ions, okay? So in the example that we're gonna do at, uh, in a moment, okay, I believe uh, the ions were uh, sodium, phosphate, and magnesium chloride, uh, so we would uh, go from there. Uh, then we're gonna write out the reactants, swap the cations around and figure out the products. We're gonna balance the equation, and then we're gonna uh, use solubility rules to identify the actual phases. So we're really gonna write this all the way out. So I'm going to slide this back and forth and talk about our example. Okay, so like I said, we want to write out the reaction, the equation for the reaction between sodium phosphate and magnesium chloride. Okay, so I recommend the first thing is that you identify your ions. So sodium, that's an Na plus ion. Phosphate, that's a PO4 three minus ion. Okay, magnesium, that's an Mg2 plus and chloride, that's Cl minus, okay? So now that we have the ions, the next step we had mentioned briefly, and I'll turn the screen over to here for a second just to come back to it, okay? We're gonna write out the properly balanced formulas of reactants. By properly balanced, I mean, as an ionic compound, we have to make sure the total charge is zero. So we're gonna take three sodiums and one phosphate to make Na3, PO4. And I'm going to leave room here to talk about the phases, which is basically the state of matter. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go to magnesium chloride. Magnesium is plus two. Chloride is minus one. So we have MgCl2. And there's the reactants. So now what we want to do is swap the cations. Okay, I'll bring you back over here for a second. Okay, we're going to swap the cations and write out the properly balanced formulas of the products. Okay. All right, so the cations are sodium and magnesium. Sodium was with phosphate, but now it's going to go to chloride. Magnesium was with chloride, now it's going to go to phosphate. The, which one you pick first doesn't really matter. Of course, every time we write a compound, we always put the positive before negative. So I'm going to take the sodium and put it with chloride. Sodium is plus one, chloride is minus one. So one of my products is nickel, sodium chloride. And the other product is magnesium phosphate. So magnesium is plus two, phosphate is minus three. So now I have to get a common multiple. And so I get Mg2, uh, nope, nope, nope. Mg3, PO4, two. Okay. And I didn't leave a lot of room for myself, so we'll kind of have to deal with that right now. Okay. Now, there's our equation. That's not much different than what we were seeing before. So like before, the next step would be balance the equation. Okay. So now to balance this, I'm going to go to the biggest compound. I'm going to say, all right, let's see, there are three magnesiums. I'm going to put a three there. 
We are two phosphates. I'm going to put a two over here. That gives me six sodiums and also six chlorines. So I probably should put six in front of sodium chloride. And now it's balanced. Now we want to go to our last step, which is using the solubility rules. Okay, we want to identify the phases for each chemical. Okay, now ionic compounds okay, do form solutions very easily, and we talked about the solubility rules yesterday. Okay, so there are compounds that are very soluble, okay, such as rule one, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, as well as ammonium. With that, we usually group. Okay, they're always soluble. Okay? In other words, every compound that has them in it, we could expect to dissolve in water. Rule two had to do with nitrates, acetates, and uh, chlorates and perchlorates. Uh, and again, they always form soluble compounds. Okay? Rule three has some exceptions to it. Rule three says that chlorides, bromides, or iodides, or sometimes we just refer to them as halides, um, are soluble unless they're paired up with silver, mercury, or lead. Rule four also has some exceptions to it. It has to do with sulfates, and we say that sulfates are usually soluble unless mixed with silver, mercury, lead, but also calcium, strontium, or barium. And then rule five was the catch-all. Anything else we assume is insoluble, meaning it's not going to dissolve, so it's going to be solid because ionic compounds on their own are almost always solid. So looking at these, I see the first thing has a sodium in it. Well, rule one said that any sodium compound is always soluble. Soluble means it's going to dissolve in water, and so we use the phase aqueous to indicate that. AQ stands for aqueous. Aqueous literally means in water. Okay? Now, there's a sodium over here also, so I know that sodium chloride is also going to be aqueous. Okay? Rule two had to do with nitrates, acetates, chlorates, perchlorates. Not in this reaction. Rule three had to do with chlorides. Okay, here's a chloride. And the rule three said that chlorides are usually soluble unless we have silver, mercury, lead. We don't have silver, mercury, or lead, so this is aqueous. Rule four had to do with sulfates. We don't have any sulfates. Rule five says anything else then we assume is insoluble, which means that it would stay a solid. So in this case, because I have all these solutions and then a solid, that tells me that the magnesium phosphate is a precipitate. Now, when you talk about precipitation, you think of the rain or snow falling out of the sky. When we talk about a precipitation, it's a solid, or sometimes even a gas, falling out of solution. Okay? So it would all, actually, in this case, almost look like it is snowing inside the tube or wherever we conducted this reaction. When we mix the chemicals, we could actually see the precipitate falling through. Okay? Questions? No? Good. Ah, that was easy. All right, so let's do one more example of complete molecular. So let me do some sliding here. Sorry, I had to finish writing something too. All right, so same idea. We're taking two solutions. It's going to be calcium nitrate and aluminum sulfate. First step, identify ions. Calcium and nitrate. Okay. Aluminum and sulfate. Okay. Next step, write out the reactants. All right, so calcium nitrate. That's going to be Ca and O32. We need two nitrates to balance out the two plus. Okay. Aluminum sulfate. Okay. Plus three minus two, common multiple six. So we're going to say it is Al2 SO4 three. All right. Swap the cations around. Okay. So I'm going to put uh, calcium with sulfate. Plus two minus two, so that's just CaSO4. And then aluminum would go with nitrate, plus three minus one, so we get AlNO3. Now I want to point out a common pratfall that happens here. A lot of people will say because there are three sulfates here, 
I have to make calcium sulfate CaSO4-3. Well, that's wrong, okay? Because calcium sulfate is plus two minus two. I don't need three sulfates there to do it. You have to, I talk about reactants and talk about products separately. Then we balance the equation, which is one of the upcoming steps. So you don't want to do it at the same time. You don't want the, fa the co, I'm sorry, the subscripts on this side do not automatically become subscripts on this side. Okay? Balance the, the formulas of the compounds properly, then balance the equation. Separate steps. Okay? <clears throat> so now we're going to say that, uh, let's see, two aluminums, I'm going to put a two here, three sulfates, and now I'm going to put the three as a coefficient out front here. That gives me six nitrates. Uh, I have two here, so that will give me three. And I have three calciums, three calciums. So now it is balanced. Finally, then we're going to write out our uh, phases. Okay, so we go to a solubility rule. Rule two: nitrates are always soluble, so that's aqueous. And this one on the end here is aqueous. Rule four says that sulfates are soluble except for silver, mercury, lead, cal calcium, strontium, barium. So this one is soluble, but this one is not because calcium is one of the exceptions here, so that is a solid. All right, so we're going to give that a try, and then we'll pick up with the next piece of the puzzle.